All right. Uh, and this is not really a proponent presentation. This is something we did for the level two, and, and it was uh, in many ways simplified. Turns out it works really nicely, as, as we'll see later. But it's the idea of trying to mm, come up with uh, GMPs that were applicable at this distance range that we're talking about 200, 300 kilometers, which uh, come from uh, Cerro Piero and, uh, and other sources. And actually, taking away the, the, the resource the expert or proponent expert hat and getting to the hat of the member of the source characterization team for Palo Verde, I want to emphasize that all the results that uh, Melanie has shown are preliminary. And, and what I think the lesson we should get from that is that both the local sources, which are likely normal but might not be all normal, and the distant uh, for, uh, sources from uh, Cerro Piero and from uh, San Andreas are important. So I think the project needs to keep focus on both sides of the issue. It cannot neglect one at the expense of the other because the relative importance of them, right now they show fairly equal, I would say, in terms of importance, and the relative importance may change one way or the other. Okay. Now let's get to results. Again, uh, data on regional Q. Kevin showed you a lot of that. I'm not going to repeat that, but I'm going to just have one zoomed in map that kind of shows things in what I see it's a little bit more clear way. Then uh, I'll show you how we treated path effects in the level two study, which is again a, a simplified way of doing, but it, uh, but it shows what one can do with this information. Comparison to NGA was two, and then responses to the specific TI team questions. <coughs> okay, so this is the map uh, you, from the Phillips et al. paper that Kevin showed you, and I'm showing the frequency bands. I think it's easier to interpret Q and just in terms of the frequency bands instead of Q and eta because again, we're not so good at doing math in our heads. Now, if you zoom in, and uh, this is a kind of a crude, zoom, well, it's, it's almost not really, uh, there's nothing there to see much. But in any case, in, the, in my original version of the, but what I was going to, sh or what my original slide showed is that you do have a higher Q around the basin and range region. You see it more in the high frequency area high frequency band, and this is the site, approximate location is this star. And you generally see that coastal California has a, a sharper, darker red than the basin and range. So it's, it's higher Q. How much higher is hard to see from these numbers, but we have all the information from these figures, but we have all the information that will allow us to perform that calculation. And again, the path from uh, again, getting oriented here, actually, I'll look this way and maybe I'll get oriented here and, and show you something like Cerro Piero will be okay I should get used to the idea that this projector never projects very well okay Cerro Piero will be something like ah, it's hard to see around this way more or less this path and the San Andrea will be something like this okay Enough of that. So again, the idea, the general lesson from there is it's a higher Q, less attenuation, mm, at least as a, as a rough initial estimate for, mm, for this path than for a typical California path. Of course, as I'll get to later, the definition of a typical California path is a little tricky because all you care about is the long paths that were used to calibrate the long distance portion of the model, you don't care about the many short paths that were used for other things. Okay, this is uh, what we had at the time, NGA West equations. Uh, here we have the results for seven and a half, one hertz. And as you see, two of the equations had uh, an elastic attenuation terms. Uh, Atkinson Bohr, or Bohr Atkinson, and Chu Young's had uh, an elastic attenuation terms, gamma terms. And you see that they do similar, have similar predictions over the entire range of distances. And what we care about is 200 to 300 kilometers, but I showed it up to 1,000, kind of Eastern US bias. <laughs> you also see that the others are off by roughly a factor of two, maybe more, in this distance range of interest. We look at another case, it's still seven and a half PGA, very much the same kind of behavior. Now, so, I'm going to show you what we did to make a workable model out of this that we had. 
So the first thing we did was uh, focusing now on the solid lines is we see again the two of the models do a decent job, or a good job, uh, at all distances, the others two don't. And we chose the Choin Youngs as the uh, preferred one of the, of the two because the main reason is <laughs> because you, you, do, you have a, a magnitude dependent gamma and you have a, a truncation, again, uh, truncated regression is close to my heart as a topic. <laughs> so I, I like the idea. So I, what I did for the others, for the uh, uh, Abrahamson and Silva and for the Campbell and Bosornia, I took them at their word and assumed that up to 200 kilometers they were all right. And then at 200, I spliced the, the Chu and Young shape. This is what you get. Then the solid lines is what you get with the, with the uh, base case Q model that were used by Chu and Youngs. Oh, and by the way, the Bohr Atkinson I left alone in that case. Now, for the second step, I say, well, remember from the Phillips et al. that Q is somewhat higher for this region, less attenuation. So I modified the gamma terms in these attenuation equations proportion. So I assume. 50% higher net Q over the entire path, which implies the gamma term goes down by, by, mm, what, by one third. So Gabe, is that the Salton Trough path or the, the Sierra Prado path? At or this the stage, San it's Andreas very path. qualitative. <laughs> At this stage, it was, uh, one uh, uh, this, was before we had, the, <laughs> this was before we had the aggregation results. Uh, before we had any of these things. So it was a, a very rough estimate. Again, when you say 50% higher, then clearly there's no precision there. And you see the effect, at least if, it is, if the change in Q is on the order of 50%, the effect is not very large. It's, it's much smaller than the model-to-model uh, -model variation that you had at 200 kilometers. But you, you see some difference. Uh, at actually, at PGA, you see less of a difference because the PGA is probably controlled by long periods anyway. At some other frequencies, some intermediate frequencies, you do see more of an effect, but still that effect is not very large, smaller than the model-to-model -model variation that you have at 200 kilometers. So we did that for all frequencies, uh, and, and we consider all these uh, eight models in the, in the hazard calculations. Next question was, how do they compare to NGA West 2? And here are the results for, again, 7.5 PGA. Remarkable. <laughs> they match very nicely. So the NGA was two. Again, those of you in the rear won't be able to read the, any of the, of the legends because now we have a lot more models. We have five more models. Uh, and the, they are ASK, BSSA, CB, CY, and Idris. Now we have the five shown as dots. But again, in general, you see that the dots superimpose nicely with uh, what we had before. Another case, magnitude five and a half. Again, not, not very important at this distance, but I still plot. And again, in most situations, you, you match well. There's sometimes one, one stray model from the, from the original attenuation equation that is higher. But in general, there's a, there's a fairly good match. Uh, seven and a half, 10 hertz, again, very good agreement. And, and not only in terms of the, um, of the shape, general shape, but the, the spread is very similar. Five and a half, 10 hertz, same lesson. And, and most of the other cases, seven and a half, one hertz, again, similar, more spread here, because again, that, this is one case where they, it's really the one hertz energy that, that matters, not the, um, well, not, not the integrated form, which is what you are seeing at, at PGA and at all the higher frequency, not the integration over the entire spectrum using a little more of a spread. But in general, there's a good match. Seven and a half, uh, point one, there's uh, the Idris model does something funny here, but it does it beyond 300 kilometers. And this one doesn't matter. Five and a half point, point one hertz, you don't care. And even there, it's not too bad. So in general, I, I was surprised to see how well they match. One thing I need to confirm is which, this is some code that I got from Linda that, I had, that she got from Nick. I think this is done with the regional, no, with the composite Q model. That's my uh, suspicion. And I, I think that needs to be confirmed because again, there are different alternative Q, in some of the NGA was too, there are alternative Q models for different regions, Japan and so on. 
that were discussed earlier. I think these are with the composite Q model. I'm not sure what you mean by composite Q Well, the, this global, global, OK. Global Q model okay. without the regional adjustment. That's my feeling needs to be confirmed. Now, uh, in response to the TI team questions, again, what's the regional difference at this stage? Uh, again, I can only answer that qualitatively. That is not for a specific path, as Norm was asking. But what I assumed there was uh, roughly 50% higher Q, which doesn't make a huge difference compared to the other uncertainties we have there. But if, again, if it's a double in, in Q, then that will make more of a difference, etc. The other issue is that the way I corrected the gammas probably overestimates the effect. Because if you, because again, uh, always when, when you, let's see, yeah, you put more, well, it works in the other, yeah, I think you overestimate the effect because the, the speckle shape may shift and so on. So you, you may, be, yeah, higher Q probably doesn't matter too much. Lower Q, you would be overestimating the effect. Uh, is this different consistent with the ground motion data residual? Again, the residuals are not available, but that should be done. That's, that's one, again, there's two pieces of data that need to be used for this work, it seems to me. One is uh, what Kevin showed you earlier, and then those maps, uh, a regionalization of Q, and the actual recordings and the residuals. So that needs to be done. But again, uh, it wasn't available at this stage. What is the impact of the Q difference at a distance 250, 350 kilometers? Kevin showed you some numbers. Uh, the way I see it, you should do it is again, uh, quantify the difference in, it's not really in Q, the difference in one over Q uh, over the specific paths of interest uh, using the grid data. Then quantify the effect <laughs> uh, using an approach similar to what people use for BS kappa corrections. Again, do IRVT to get a Fourier amplitude, adjust the Fourier amplitude, convert back to spectra, and check there. The one e complication there, as I mentioned earlier, is the reference path for the NGA equations is a little difficult to define. I think unless you start look, I don't know exactly, for example, what data you guys used for defining your elastic attenuation model. Is it, was it California data or was it data from where? Which paths are those that are we, were used to constrain the, the long distance behavior? Which version? Which model? Oh, let's say uh, <coughs> the new two. one. The new one. The new one. We used data from uh, California. We looked at the individual earthquakes from that we could regress everywhere. Okay, so we know. So, yeah, we know so what we those know paths which ones were. And the, and the, so the the base model is based primarily on California data. Okay, but different California paths going from the, through the from the Sierras and all the California. Okay, so but it's it not specific. To yeah, it's not it specific to, to a path that goes through this area. No. Exactly. Yeah. So it will have to be done event by event. It was done event by event. Yes. And, right. and, and getting the reference 1 over Q, in, uh, path 1 over Q will have to be done event by event, I think. I'm afraid. Well, the, old, the final model didn't, doesn't have event-specific Qs in it, or gamma terms. Yeah, but for, for us to define, I, it yeah. reference 1 over Q, or the average 1 over Q or the path, we may have to at least well, at least look mm -hmm. at your map of paths and, and then decide on that. So it's not straightforward, is what I'm trying to say. But we don't, the, there, there isn't really a, Q, a global Q model, at least in, we, we, we had the full data, the global data set, we pulled out areas like Japan is different. Yes. And mm -hmm. then maybe Taiwan is a different rate or whatever it is, and, and everything else that was left not different from California, yeah. that's the default model. Okay. So California is really what you should be using as your reference. That's going to be by far the bulk of the okay. data. Okay, okay. But it's still not straightforward because, again, you have to see if it's north or south and what kind of paths do they cross the valleys and, and so on. So it's not, it's not so straightforward to define what is, because I talk about again, difference. And the mm -hmm. difference the implies difference. there has to be a reference and the reference, the, can be calculated, but it's not, it's not straightforward, or it may not be straightforward. But when you show that one comparison, saying taking the NJUS2 model, which was essentially a California model, and that is now similar to your yeah. Q-adjusted yeah. older models, right? Correct. So yeah, it may be that this step is not needed, but if you were going to do it quantitatively, 
you have to go through these the steps, steps which yeah. are not so straightforward. But it may be based on my comparison that is not needed. Okay, and present comparisons again uh, of uh, with the uh, yeah, sorry, uh, 2010. It's not 2000. It's 2012. Okay. In any case, uh, we mm, we presented the comparison. They they match surprisingly well, and uh, I, I was really <laughs> very surprised that they match so so nicely there, showing that uh, there's some consistency in the, between what we did and uh, and what's coming out of the new equation, the new NGA West. And that's all I have. That, that's that's still seems not the expected result. If we had taken the the, the new models have a better Q term in them, right? Much yes, better. Much better. But they're now consistent from the California model to what you adjusted to Arizona. But shouldn't it still become flatter in Arizona than these NJ West two models? Well, uh, yes. Yes, but again, if you go back to this figure, and similar figures that I did not include, it looks like that the effect of Q here is not very large. It's much smaller than the effect, than the expert to expert difference. And this is Robin McGuire. The thing is, Gabriel hasn't shown any Arizona data because we don't have it. We don't have any. At this point. So right. this is just speculation. Okay. And the NGA2 agrees with the speculations. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's, good. That's a no good way to put it. There's no truth. That's there. a good way to put it. It, so, it agrees with that with a very simple model that we use for the level two. Yeah, the thing, let me continue. The thing that I hope is that the Q model we, will be explicit in these ground motions that come out of this project so that we can change them or that they can be modified explicitly for Arizona. Well, that would be nice yeah. because that way you can you can also tailor it for different sources. Yes, if, if it's different, if, if, if it's the only into these complicated equations, that's going to be very difficult. The only way we were going to do it is to change the the linear distance term. The gamma. That's it. The linear distance term. Well, the gamma term. So if we have our normal log distance, and then on top of it, there's a linear term, and we're just going to adjust that to match the data and be consistent with what the Q says it should be. I did, hopefully, those are going okay, to be well, consistent. Then an explicit explanation of what that adjustment is and how we would do it for different Qs would be useful. Very useful. Okay. So, that, so that if we have some path that has a special Q, we can You would need to adjust it there. OK. Did, Bob, you have, are you turning your gammas into Q numbers or not? I mean, do you have a translation of what the gamma effect is with relative to the Q model? No, no, we haven't done it that way. Okay. No, we just as a as rough a approximation for anything other than PGA is to assume that it's proportional to yeah. to one over Q. But we have magnitude dependence in there. You have magnitude yeah. dependence, which will shift again. If you do it right, it, you really have to go through the steps, because the IRVT and all that. Because our magnitude dependence is not it varies with period. It varies. You know, as we found it, it's not a very, it's not a very clean. Where you can just shift it up and down. It, it, the magnitude variation with period in response spectra space is a little complicated. Especially for PDA, okay. but I'm sure for all of them too. For all. But we need to provide it in a form that they can convert Q to gamma, whatever we're going to mm -hmm. say, so that they can easily adjust the model. And we probably have to build it in there. The coefficient on gamma is some Q relative to the California Q model or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. If the effect is large enough, yes. Okay. If it's too small enough, we'll just smooth through it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions?